My name is Wyatt Barkley, better known as Dub B. As a producer and performer, my love for music has taken me to the industry's biggest stage. But beauty is my passion, and ever since I could walk, I've been immersed in the game I love, which is golf. And I was raised to compete on golf's biggest stages. Now I'm bringing it all together. Come and join me as we feed body, soul, and mind and unlock some of the most beautiful experiences the golf world has to offer, where everything exists above par. From the club to the tee, come travel with Dub B. New Delhi was never seen, pitch ready, green fairway dream, bring it all to reality, right here on Above Par. Pasadena, California, Eaton King Golf Course. The location of the man behind the OTT Miracle Swing, Cristo Garcia. You may have seen him on YouTube, or subscribe to his extensive library of golf videos on MSE TV as the popularity of his channel My Swing Evolution has been impacting hundreds of thousands of golfers, their lives and golf swings for more than a decade. By sharing his story in personal golf swing evolution, inspired by Ben Hogan, and now teaching golfers the discoveries he uncovered during his extensive studies of the greatest golfers and golf swings ever to be witnessed. Now in his 50s and in the best golf shape of his life, Cristo joins us to share more about the evolution of his golf swing journey. Golf is a game that you can pick up later in life. It's a game you can pick up early in life. It's a game you can play all your life. Mm -hmm. And it's something that is always evolving. So let's, let's jump into this, right? Talk about always evolving, your swing evolution. Tell us about your swing evolution. I know you have a whole you know, website dedicated to it and hours and hours of video, but give us a little taste. Okay, so... Um, I consider myself a movement expert. Mm -hmm. I was a martial arts champion. I won the Florida Open Karate Championship when I was 19. Wow. I had been the state junior champion previous to that. Um, then I became a professional ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, I'm a certified yoga instructor and mm -hmm. personal trainer. And I always thought that because I was a good mover that I should be able to play golf better than I did. Mm -hmm. I've been playing since I was eight and it's never come easy to me. Mm -hmm. So when I started my swing evolution, I got Ben Hogan's Five Lessons book mm -hmm. and he said in the opening of the book that anyone who follows these fundamentals should be able to shoot in the 70s. Mm -hmm. and, and that I had not I had only shot in the 70s twice when I was a teenager and that's mm -hmm. practicing all the time and and, and those were the two days that God blessed me where the whole game came together, the driving, the irons, the chipping and the putting. Mm -hmm. It took like an act of God for me to do that. And mm -hmm. it had been over 20 years since I'd broken 80, but Hogan said, you should be able to do it. So I started working on the fundamentals in the book. Mm -hmm. And the big difference today is because of YouTube, you can actually see swings of Ben Hogan. Mm -hmm. But growing up, you'd maybe get a flash of a swing before the US Open or the Masters, but there was nothing you could really sink your teeth into and study until right. the internet. Right. And I started to study his swing. I started to work on the fundamentals in his book. Mm -hmm. And in three months, I shot 79. Wow. And I, I was like, this is unbelievable. And then the rest of that year, I ended up breaking 80 14 times. And oh. I dropped my handicap from 14 to 5.6 okay. in the course of that year. Mm -hmm. and. The next year, in January, I decided to start my swing evolution to tell people that it's actually possible to get better. Right. Uh, the USGA says after three years you plateau. Right. And you really, you know, are stuck there. Right. And I, I didn't like the idea of that, that for over 30 years I'd played average golf because I felt that I should be able to, I love the game. I right. love golf. Yeah. And it's, it hurts when you're ashamed of the way you play. Right. And, uh. I worked real hard at it, and now, you know, now we're here having yeah, a conversation. 25 million plus views later, yeah. right? You swung as Ben Hogan. Not only swung as Ben Hogan, but you actually basically played Ben Hogan in a Golf Channel documentary. Yes, and that's one of the greatest uh, dreams of my life. One thing that I, I feel is important is being able to visualize what you're trying to accomplish. Right. And so my first dream was to be able to break 80. Right. My next dream was to be able to break par. Mm -hmm. And so about three and a half years into my swing evolution, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't get lower than 74. Mm -hmm. And I decided to switch everything up. 
changed my clubs, changed my balls, changed my practice routine. I even changed the way I drove to get to the golf course. Wow. To give me a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And in six weeks, I shot two under par. Wow. You know, so these things, I think it's important to be able to imagine them being real. And I began to dream as an actor, what if someday I could play Ben Hogan in a TV show or movie? Right. And it's, it's kind of a wild or crazy thought, mm -hmm. but it came true. Yeah, I get it. You know? Yeah. So um, another one of my dreams was I wanted to be sponsored by the Ben Hogan Golf Company. Right. And then one day I get the call. Boom. And welcome to the Hogan family. How beautiful is that? It, it was one of the most thrilling moments of my life to, to hear this from the CEO of the new Ben Hogan Golf Company that they wanted me to be their guy. Right. You know? So having a vision and knowing it takes determination and drive to get there, changing your perception, but work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said you've participated in everything from martial arts to ballet, which is, I mean, ballet. I mean, you talk about everything is form there, right? And strength. It, everything. Right? And then understanding the, 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 the form when it comes to swinging mm -hmm. a club and how that can actually, you know, all the technical aspects that could benefit you as a golfer, right? Mm -hmm. But the overall process of believing and achieving mm -hmm. and that kind of yogic outlook. Yeah. Right? Can you speak a little bit more about that kind of approach and how that also with yoga benefits the overall being to attain higher levels of whatever they seek? Well, I know that you know a lot about yoga. Yes. And the one thing that I think is remarkable about it is outsiders look at yoga as practically like a form of stretching. Mm -hmm. You know, say, oh, I'm not Very flexible enough look to do, it. or it's a kind of workout. Yeah. To me, the poses are sacred. Right, all you the know? asanas. Yeah, and the, the energy that it releases and requires and the levels of your consciousness that you tap into, mm -hmm. um, it's something, it's an actual sacred practice. It's ringing true, by yeah. the way. But yeah. I, I see the golf swing as a sacred practice. Uh -huh. And I see the positions in a golf swing. When you see a beautiful golf swing, it's like an asana. Mm -hmm. It's like a dance. Mm -hmm. And it requires rhythm mm -hmm. and pacing. You can't, if you get too quick, you're likely to hit a poor shot. Mm -hmm. Like when, say for example, you're dancing to a song with somebody that you care about. Mm -hmm. You don't want to speed up the song, so you, the goal isn't to finish the song. Mm -hmm. The goal is to exist inside of that present moment and feel it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no rush. Right. You know, um, George Knudsen has a great quote where he says, "We don't play golf to relax; we relax to play golf." Right. But there's so much tension in swings. There is. You know, there's so much anticipation and wanting to hit the shot and rather than be in the moment and let it flow and and come out of you agreed you know so it's a it's a challenge i'm a, I'm a quick type person I, I want to you know i usually walk a little bit quicker i talk a little bit quicker but when i play golf i try and relax relax to play golf and let it flow so is that your first key advisement to a golfer one of the most important things that i tell golfers is smooth transition. Mm -hmm. I think for 30 years, the problem with my golf swing was I'd get wound up and go like, mm -hmm. like right from the top. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that that A, creates a lot of tension. It short circuits your, your body so that you can't really leverage the club optimally. Mm -hmm. When you look at pro golfers who hit the ball so far, mm -hmm. They don't, they don't show any obvious signs of strain mm -hmm. unless they're trying to do something remarkable, like hit a 350 yard drive. Mm -hmm. Then there may be an occasion where you see somebody really gas it. But most of the time you're trying to hit an exact number mm -hmm. with an eight iron. My exact number with my eight iron is around 150 yards. Mm -hmm. You know, a pro it may be 170, you know. It, it, whatever that number is, it doesn't matter as long as you can consistently hit that number, mm -hmm. you know? 
Um, Jack Nicklaus used to say, I want to hit a driver firm. Mm -hmm. I want to get it out there as far as I can. But every other club in my bag, I swing at three quarters, 75%, because I'm trying to hit that exact number. You know, and that's, that's what it's all about. And uh, the biggest thing about my swing evolution this last year is trying to let go and use the least amount of energy that I have to mm. on the golf course. Mm. I don't, I don't have to make it so hard on myself. Like say you've got a chip shot around a green, you know, you can make it as tough as you want or you can make it as easy as you want. Mm -hmm. You can hit a bump and run, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm trying to use the least energy possible around the golf course now. I think it's a good approach to life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. know, I think that's one of the ways that, I think you just hit the nail on the head there, that that approach, to life, you know, I, we always talk about the lessons learned on the golf course and how that can reflect life and build our own self-awareness. But I think that right there about using the least energy possible mm -hmm. to attain and accomplish what you set out to accomplish and know that you have that ability without right. strain, right? Right. It's, it's, it's a very key element to recognize, you know, being, being here now, you know, Ram Das, shout out to Ram Das, we love be here now. Right. Mm -hmm. And being on the golf course, being present in the moment, taking in the atmosphere, the environment. But then I, the element that you brought in to the last conversation about the asanas and the beauty in them mm -hmm. and the importance that the golf swing is in its way, just like those poses. Right. Talk about form. I mean, you you were a professional ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, set to go pro. Mm hmm. And, I was pro. Oh, you were pro. Yeah. Right. And but you had an opportunity to go to a huge yeah, ballet even, company. Yeah. I, right. Yeah. I told you that I, I there is a, a fork in the road, and rather than join the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, you know, I went another way. Right. Um, and you know, who knows what would have happened, but I was there. Right. But you know, if we talk about, you know, for example, you know, if I'm going to do, you know, a triangle pose. You know, there is, there's a balance to the form, you know, that we're, we're trying to achieve. Right. And the, the same thing is true, you know, in a backswing, you know, impact, and all the way up, you know, to our finish. You know, there's, we, we want to have control over the whole motion. Um, I know that there's bubbas that, that may swing and they, they lose their balance occasionally, but they still hit great shots. My idol is Ben Hogan. Yeah. And I don't think there's any greater proponent of balance in golf than Ben Hogan. Mm -hmm. You know, his, I mean, I, I can only think of maybe a couple of swings where he ever even lost his footing at all. Mm -hmm. And usually it's because of a really firm drive and he rotated so hard he would step back slightly. Mm -hmm. but you never see him fall out of a shot. Mm -hmm. So aside from Ben Hogan, who would be three other golfers that you would model a swing after? Well, I'm, I'm doing a, a great deal of research right now that has actually completely ripped my world wide open, just blown me away. It's the most groundbreaking research I've done in the 12 years I've been working on golf. Mm -hmm. And the second golfer I would name is Sam Snead. Hmm. The third golfer I would say would be Bobby Jones. Mm -hmm. And let's just talk about those three golfers for a moment. Sam Snead, Bobby Jones, and Ben Hogan. Mm -hmm. These are the three golfers that Gary Player probably admired the most. Mm -hmm. And Gary Player told me something I found very remarkable. When we were talking about the greatest golf swing ever, we were talking about Ben Hogan. Mm -hmm. And he said, the greatest golfer, the greatest swing ever may have belonged to a golfer from a hundred years ago, Bobby Jones. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there's something about Bobby Jones and Sam Snead that they do that started me down a rabbit hole that I will plant my flag and die on in the world of golf. Mm. They were over the top swingers. Okay. What is the biggest problem that golfers are told they face in the golf swing today? Tell me. I would say they're told that they swing over the top. Mm -hmm. If you're a slicer, 
you swing over the top. Now, how could it be that Bobby Jones and Sam Snead both swung over the top and they were two of the all-time greatest golfers in history? Well, the truth of the matter is, if you swing over the top and you're out of position at the top, you're likely to hit a slice or make poor contact. But if you swing over the top from the inside, mm -hmm. the way Sam Snead and Bobby Jones swung, mm -hmm. then you can win major championships, okay? Today, I'm convinced that Ben Hogan had a slight over-the-top move mm. from the inside. I've been doing handle traces on his hand path, and he has an over-the-top move. So for the first 11 years of my swing evolution, I was under the impression that great golfers drop the club under mm -hmm. in transition. Mm -hmm. If you look at golf from the 1960s and before, the dominant motion was inside over the top. Really? It was the pattern that most great golfers used. Mm -hmm. I looked at the 1953 Ryder Cup on YouTube. Yeah. Almost everybody on the first tee from England and America took the club back to the inside and had a slight over the top move. Yeah. If you take the club down the line the way it's taught today most most people talk about width mm -hmm. taking the club out like so mm -hmm. if you go over the top from here you're going to hit a slice mm -hmm. but if you look at golfers pre-1960 they took the club back to the inside yeah like if you were swinging a sledgehammer or an axe yeah you wouldn't swing an axe out here you chop your ankle off right you know you take it inside like this, gather the weight so you could apply force on the downswing. Right, now, I've, I've seen these older images that I've seen play back in little clips, like you yeah. said, exactly Bobby that. Bobby Jones inside, and if you take it inside enough, over the top simply takes you to square. Can you show us? Yeah, yeah. Can, can you d demonstrate that for us? So I'll tell you, there was a uh, there's one thing that I believe very strongly, mm -hmm. and that's your life can be changed in an instant mm -hmm. if you find the information that you're seeking. Right. Like if you find the answer, your life can literally change in an instant. Mm -hmm. My golf life changed in January, okay? And I've been aware, I've done uh, an analysis of Sam Snead, and I've talked about his inside over the top move. Mm -hmm. I've observed it throughout my swing evolution with many famous golfers from the past, mm -hmm. but I never tried it. Okay. I never tried it because there's so many warnings from the famous golf instructors that, you know, don't swing over the top. It's considered a death move. Right. I just never tried it. Right. Even though I observed it and talked about it in great golf swings. Yeah. In January, I read a tweet from Jim McLean, the famous golf instructor from Doral, and he showed a video clip of one swing of Bruce Litsky. Okay. And he said in the tweet, my old roommate at the University of Houston, Bruce Litsky would rather go fishing than work on his golf swing. Mm -hmm. He still had one of the most amazing careers in golf. He's what I call an over the top flusher. Mm. And I said, over the top flusher? Mm -hmm. That sounds, sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was struggling with my golf swing, dropping it under, hitting pushes and hooks, and hurting my back. Mm -hmm. I actually hurt my back very mm -hmm. badly. I doubled over on my knees mm -hmm. last year on a driving range, hitting drivers, dropping it under and crunching my, my back. And so in January, I think it was about January 17th of this year, I was right down at the end of the range over there, and it, I remembered reading that tweet earlier in the day about Bruce Litsky being an over-the-top flusher. So I stood over a golf ball, and I started to think about it. And I had had a very famous SoCal pro tell me, he's like, you, you got to be more over the top to compress these irons. You got to cover the ball. You hear cover the ball a lot nowadays. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just don't understand what that means. You know, what are they talking about? And so I started to think about this over the top flush move. And when I tried to, to go left in the past, I had a big tendency to, to hit a big pull. Mm -hmm. But I realized swinging out the way most people teach today, if you go 
over, you're 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 going to be you're going to be coming in across the across the target line. I had a tendency to drop it under, and I was I was hitting these big hooks, but I I realized if I take it inside and up, and go over, it should I well. I'll tell you. I just I just did it and it worked. Right. Let me see if I can just do a couple. I'm not too warm yet, but mm -hmm. nice little draw. So in the time that I've been doing this, I have not had any trouble flexing the shaft and getting it to spring through the ball. Mm -hmm. Because I have more leverage being on top of the club, on top of the ball, covering it. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's it's the magic move that I'd been missing my whole swing evolution. But it's been right in front of you. You've been watching it until you attempted it. Yeah. You took the risk to say, how am I going to approach this? And I'm going to find my own answer. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. I think it's the biggest. If there's an elephant in the room in golf instruction, it's that over the top is actually the easiest way to hit a golf ball. Mm -hmm. And like I said, Ben Hogan even had a slight OTT move. Mm -hmm. um, in my swing, I don't think it's very visible. I'm the same height as Ben Hogan. Mm -hmm. Neither one of us are very tall. We both swing rather flat. We both have a, an aggressive lateral move in our swing. And I think that that makes my OTT move not as visible as Sam Sneed, mm -hmm. who was tall and took it up. And you can see a big loop mm -hmm. like this. Hold out your right arm for a second out to the side. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. let's go under like this. OK, you can feel that's under, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go over mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. They're two completely different motions, right? right. Okay, now hold it out to the side. Mm -hmm. Go under like this, a small circle. Mm -hmm. Now go over. It's a, it's a completely different motion. It almost feels the over is lighter. Yeah. There's like a lightness to it. Yeah, and, and when you have something that's heavier on one end, a club is designed that one end is heavier than the other. Uh -huh. Going over allows you to control the weight of the club head Whereas when you go under, you're fighting gravity. You are. And this club head is wanting to, you're having to, to manhandle it or guide it more. Whereas if I'm going over, I can let it, let it just swing down. Like if I had a, a child on a swing, I just let it, let mm -hmm. it go. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to force it. Yeah. And, and when I was dropping it under, I could get quick. I could do all these all these unnatural things would creep up in my body and right. fears and things would pop into my head. Right. And I would be managing a half a dozen swing thoughts. I've got to get my weight here and do this and lay it off and all these different things. But now my favorite quote is from Sam Sneed. I just draws it back and hits it. There you go. The flow. What would be your first bit of advice to a brand new golfer? What I would tell a golfer is to learn to swing in balance. Mm -hmm. that you want to swing the club, you don't want the club swinging you, mm. okay? And when you see people struggle and they look like they're, they're swinging so hard, the, the club's swinging them around. Mm -hmm. You have to be centered and you have to move the club in your space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what does that mean? Well, one of the things that I've found, you know, especially with this new move that I'm doing, is I'm capturing the weight of the club head so I can be in control of it at all times, you know, as opposed to, you know, being swung around by the weight of the club. So you see the OTT move being actually the evolution of golf, bringing it full circle. So to me, what happened was when golf instruction became an industry, mm -hmm. the magazines and the big golf academies that it became in vogue to teach a wide swing in an attempt to create speed and width and swinging out instead of inside and up. And Jones, Sneed, Hogan, they swung the club more inside and up. And if you do that, almost by necessity, you need to have a little over the top move as opposed to a dropping it under move. And that's what I think the golf world needs to hear again 
is everything old is new again. Hmm. That's amazing. You know, and I think it's the best way to swing a golf club. Right. It's the easiest way to swing a golf club. Instead of having a million swing thoughts, I just want to swing the club up and hit down on the ball. So the over analysis of the wheel, why try to recreate the wheel? <laughs> Right. Let's go back to the simplicity of it. That thing rolls, right? Yeah. You, you can look at a wheel and, yeah. and you can start getting into pie and all this other stuff. Right. It's you're missing the forest for the trees. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. it's like we just want to hit down on the golf ball. Well, let me let me I've never I've had minimal instruction in my life. A golf club was put in my hand at two years old by my dad. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've swung with the ten finger grip. Yeah. And I've never listened to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been my mantra for my life, almost, right? Yeah. But bottom line is, you know, when you're talking about the the the, the form, and the way that you zero in on the technical aspects. Mm -hmm. But now, going back to like a natural. It's yeah. A, it's a more natural. It feels like that flow. Yeah. Even when we're going over the top, it's lighter, right? Yeah. Just take a look at my swing. Tell me what you think. I mean, you know, it's it's definitely been a uh, its own thing for a very long time. Haven't even hit a ball today. <laughs> you can hit it. It's a good shot. I mean, as far as did you see any over the top? I mean, how would you? It looks right on plane. It's right on. It's on plane. Yeah, you're you're not doing this. No, you know, so that's good. You're you can get leverage on the club. Yeah, and now coming back, I mean, I've been he I've heard a, that I have a very short backswing. I, I, you didn't I see don't that? think it, your 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 swing tempo is is nice. <laughs> you know what uh, Mo Norman says? He says. Put this dumb guy on that dumb guy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's really all there is to it. Right. You know. It's very interesting because that's what I've done my whole life. Mm -hmm. But I've never thought I was a dumb guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the club. It's the club. Like you said, golf is sacred. It is a sacred journey. Mm -hmm. it, is, it, it is what opens our eyes to our own ability to believe in our own selves. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that the interesting thing is when you're finding yourself and you're finding your journey, what's meant for you magnetizes to you. And you saw Ben Hogan swing, and mm -hmm. you said, you found that, that, that instruction manual. Yeah. And you said, I'm going to embody this. Mm -hmm. Look at you. I mean, look at, what, look at what you've manifested. I mean, all the way down to the cap. <laughs> That's right. Really? And, and, and it, it's, it's became your life. Mm -hmm. And it's opened doors for you throughout your whole journey. And now you're at that place where it seems you have not conquered the Ben Hogan swing, mm -hmm. but you're evolving from it. Right. You're opening your new door, your own discovery. Mm -hmm. you, you've mastered the master. Can't master the master, right. but you've mastered your... Tried to model after. Modeled after the master. And now you realize you have to make it you. Yeah, the, the most interesting thing is when I decided to do the OTT change. Yeah. Well, it, it, the first perfectly struck ball, I'm like, this is it. You just, you, I, in an instant, I knew I swing more like Ben Hogan now than ever before. Wow. That's so, interesting, huh? Because so you, you were. When I did that trace on his handle and I started to see it, it's like he leverages the club effortlessly every time. Whereas before this, I'd have to go and hit a bucket of balls before I played because I didn't know if it was going to, what the ball was going to do that mm -hmm. day. I had to big, find my swing every day. Hmm. Now I'm finally beginning to own my swing. So amazing. You also meditate. Yes. Daily. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us what meditation has done, not only for your golf game, but for your life? Yeah, this is a, a wonderful subject because I've, meditated for periods throughout my life. I was first introduced to it in the 70s when I was a kid in martial arts class. Mm -hmm. We would meditate for a couple minutes at the beginning of class and I would just sit there quiet because everybody else was sitting quiet. Mm -hmm. um, but as I grew older, I started to realize we have to really be silent 
to spend time with ourselves. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to music, you're having a conversation with the artist. Mm -hmm. If TV's on in the background, your subconscious mind is listening to those words and you're having a conversation. In order to meditate, you have to be with yourself alone. And so last July, um, I began to meditate for one hour every morning. And even though I'd had um, a regular practice, say 10, 15, even 20 minutes, an hour long meditation is much different. And what happens in my experience is around 30 to 40 minutes in, noisy mind just gets tired of running in circles and starts to finally be quiet. And it's when you're quiet, I think, that you really find yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I started to meditate in July, it was when I was in the biggest golf slump of my swing evolution. Mm. I would be stressed out, anxiety ridden. I'd come home from the golf course and look like I had been through the ringer. And my girlfriend noticed within a month of me meditating daily, she's like, you're not coming home worn out and beat up like you used to. I still wasn't playing my best golf, but I was more at peace with myself. Mm -hmm. I was more accepting of, you know, golf is a game of mistakes, essentially. And if you beat yourself up over every mistake, good luck, this game is gonna really wear you out. You know, but I began to accept golf in a new way. And then when I was blessed with the miracle, I'm saying this January of a whole new understanding of my golf swing. When, when I talk about what happened yesterday on the golf course in the skins game, it's a different Cristo playing the game. You know, it was a very, it could have been a pressure filled moment at the time. And I don't know that I would have risen to the occasion the same way that I did yesterday. Yesterday, I did it calmly, with focus, and joy. Mm -hmm. And I think that that largely has to do with my regular meditation practice. That's beautiful. That rings very true. Yeah, so I used to think that meditation was about having no thoughts. And it's, it's kind of impossible to do that. Indeed. Yeah, uh, I think it's more about letting, you know, A, listening, you know, if you have a thought over and over again, you know, it may be something that you really need to listen to. But, you know, one other thing just to, to bring up, um, three months before I started meditating, I became sober mm. for the first time in my life for an extended period of time, and I'm still sober. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was something that I didn't know that I could do. Um, because I wanted to hide from myself, mm. you know, and I always looked forward to that drink at the end of the day. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that for other folks, but I finally outgrew it and realized that I, I really don't need it. And there's not a moment I've regretted when I've been sober, but there are moments that I regret from when I've drank too much mm -hmm. or been hung over the next morning and not performed my best. Mm -hmm. So those two things together, I think, are, are pretty, pretty rich. And, you know, and I, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but right now this recipe works really well for me. Oh, it's a beautiful recipe. And you talk about your swing evolution, my swing evolution, but it's a life evolution that you're living and you're discovering along this process. Golf is, uh, has allowed me to, to try and be the best I can be. I'm actively trying to be the best I can be. What does that mean for me? It's my own unique journey, but I want to be a good dad. I want to marry America, my girlfriend. I want to build a happy future, and I want to help other golfers to play better golf and, and, and play happier. You know, I, I have a saying, have fun, play better. Well, let's have fun and play better. Right on. Thank brother. you, Christo. Excellent. Indeed. Christo Garcia. His graciousness, golf acumen, and astute knowledge of the swing's mechanics, complemented by his unwavering passion for the game, exemplifies the dedication that any golfer at any level can find inspiration in. While his continued perseverance on the journey of his golf swing evolution has led him now to the breakthrough of the OTT over the top miracle swing, his intrigue and excitement for the game of golf and life 
leaves no wonder why his My Swing Evolution channel and MSC TV continues racking up views and inspiring golfers worldwide. But as Christo says, and I agree, most importantly, no matter what, have fun, play better.